Mr. Woodruff, you've tested positive for HIV. Have you ever engaged in homosexual conduct? Homo, homo. Did you say homo? You made a mistake. We estimate you have 30 days left. Story about Ron Woodruff in 1986. Um, heterosexual man who contacts HIV. First, she's Ron's adversary, but then becomes Ron's partner. And they, they become reliant on one another. They, they end up needing each other. They both uh, uh, are part of something that's really important in each other's lives. He's given 30 days to live. He lives seven more years. How does he do that? He started leaving America and smuggling in these alternative drugs and vitamins from, from out of the United States. They were illegal to take in the United States, but they were keeping him and a lot of others alive. You know, Rayon becomes, holds a really special place, I think, in, in, in Ron's heart and vice versa. He started a buyer's club, which is basically, he was a black market drug dealer. But the drugs he was dealing were helping HIV patients. Um, so he's a smuggler, he's a hustler, um, and he's a guy, like I said, who was given 30 days to live, lived seven years. Walker, Dorset, Blunt. Newsom, Jeff Coat. These are patients? Yes, sir. They're also the names of players on the Dallas Cowboys. No. That's a hell of a coincidence, isn't it? Isn't this a little ridiculous? I mean, he said it. Can you prove these are patients? Can you prove they're not? I stayed home. I became a monk. I was home for five months, and I had my militant little meals there, and I just sat home and studied and worked on everything around the wood. I just started at the beginning, meeting with transgender people, listening, learning, talking, experimenting, failing, practicing, failing some more. Uh, from the voice to the high heels to the waxing to the weight loss, you know, there was a there was a pretty long and intensive, laborious process. Do you like this dress? Because I think the neckline's a little plunging. Rayon, the whole purpose of this study is to determine if ACT is helping people. Come on, Evie, you know there ain't no help in me. That doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying. Why are you so good to me? Bless your little heart. I was attracted to the film. Uh, I hadn't made a film in six years, but I was attracted to this film because of the role, the script, the nature of the story. Uh, I thought it was a really important story to tell. And the fact that it was dealing with the age crisis, but from one guy's point of view, who was amazing, renegade of a character. I mean, an anarchist. This guy was wild. He was not a saint by any means. He was wild and through him just through pure self-preservation, this guy just trying to keep himself alive, almost unbeknownst to him, he became a crusader for a demographic that had HIV like he did. And he almost, he was never even almost conscious that he was doing that. I hope that audiences get some insight, uh, maybe learn about something they, uh, something they hadn't seen before. Maybe have some empathy if they didn't um, you know, it's, it's a difficult and challenging, um, but really rewarding story. Man, I got one life. I wanted to mean something. Just let me be.